Your it is, sir. Huh? So, I can't tell you how many times I've been down these streets here in Shella and passed by the Jaha guest house here and not known the significance that it has to the story of Omar Lali and Tekra Muigai. The Jaha guest house is the last place that they spent time together before the entire furious storm of coverage around their love story began. Omar and Tekra must have walked through these doors that evening and gone up to a floor above here, which is, you know, about two floors up. Before she had her accident, some would say might have been pushed or hit. And then after that, she would pass away. She came in on her own two feet, but left carried by Omar and some of his relatives. And days later, what took place took place. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the last door that she walked through. What do you believe happened that night? What I feel happened that night, I think that I told the guy, I'm, I'm done with you. I will not take care of your life anymore. And the guy just decided to fight her. Did you kill Tekra Wegai? Omar Lali, the suspect in the supposed murder of Keroche Brewery's heiress Tekra Muigai, is to appear in Garson High Court. He says that he was so in love with her, couldn't have done anything like that. The director of public prosecutions has dropped murder charges against Omar Lali. And then it became a love story. That's according to what happened. The, the, the results we got to hear uh, soon after the passing of Tekra Muigai. Watching what's come out about 29-year-old Tekra Mwigai and 53-year-old Omar Lali's love affair has felt like reading a badly written romance novel. Anecdote after anecdote on everything from Tekra Mwigai's wealthy background as the heiress of a billion shilling empire running into the arms of a bearded man with nothing to his name to Omar's appeal as a silver fox. But precious little is told about who these two people are, even less about a death whose cause is contested. The best place to begin is in Lam, the setting of this relationship. But Lamu is more than just where Tekra and Omar Lali met. Lamu is Omar's home, the place that built him into who he is today. Who is he? Tucked in the middle of Shella's beautiful villas is a house that doesn't quite look complete. This is Omar Lali's home. His current girlfriend invites us in because Omar is asleep. It's 7.30 a.m. He doesn't get up for a few more hours. We meet up four hours later. <laughs> but before we can get started, we notice a new buzz around Omar. He was recently appointed as the national coordinator of Beach Boys by colorful presidential candidate in the August 2022 poll, George Wajakoya. Omar seems unbothered by the attention. By now, he's used to it. The case of Tekra Muigai's death has made Omar some sort of cult celebrity, and it doesn't take long for us to see this. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, sorry, Coco. Coco. Pleasure to meet you. 
Or your friends, old friends? Yes. Okay. Wrong way. You should Google us. <laughs> right now, he's taking us to a very significant place. You were saying so you were with your daughter? Yeah. Uh, we are now upper. Uh -huh. We are going Maji. Uh, I came to the bar. Yeah. Kitchen, <laughs> Sat down, we've had a couple of drinks. A lot of drinks. A lot, a lot of drinks, yeah. Ilikuwa, yani, waliponi, waliponi ita, tulikuja, kena nika muona. And then, nika matuli, I wouldn't say ni shetani, I would say, connect, angels connection. Nika ma mungu, mwenye ya misema, you guys should be, stick together. Omar says he's never really struggled to get women's attention. I am in from Chapel Sunday. Attraction. Uh, I come with it from from long time. Because my As if to prove his point, Omar calls over a young lady from the table next to ours for a quick poll. What is it about Omar that you think women find attractive? Oh, for me, everything. <laughs> everything here is attractive. Sure. He's a kind person. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you can see his kindness just yeah, by looking? Yeah, I can see his kindness just by looking at him. Yeah, a happy person. But even he knows that's not quite where his interests lie. How many women has he been with, I ask? My first one when I was 14 years old. The very first woman you slept yes. with? Italian lady, she was 36. She was more than double your age. Yes. Decades before that night with Tekra in June 2019, Omar Lali's life had been defined in many ways by the women he was with. Me, I used to, and then I dated to local women. Like any local women, they were stubborn. Me kachara nao, ni kanze kwingi diao. Wazungu, ani me achapa. Mm. I used to have like three, four girls, two, five girlfriends. At the same at time? At the same time. Wow. Now we're going to join her. So the women were going to Kujauku was Zungu at that time. So I see you now to turn up and go now, Ulaya, all over the world. <laughs> so, yeah, and so, then yeah. after we married uh, a lady from Lamu, who was 1920. We got a and then we got a divorce. and then we a teacher. I was 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 a teacher. I while abroad, Omar says he worked in a perfume packaging factory, among other jobs but couldn't keep up with the lifestyle. When, in 2002, when he lost his grandmother, he decided to move back to Kenya. How did that affect your marriage? Uh, the decision to move back? It was divorce. 
because she didn't want to come back to Kenya with me. Then I meet this uh, special lady, I would say, because she have a very cute girl for me, um, Annalyn. Uh, she's a very good person. She helped me a lot. And then I was with her for a while, and then we had a baby, baby girl, my last born, Umi. And then I went to Holland with her. I went to uh, Scotland. I went to Belgium. I went to Spain. I went to France with my little girl. She was very little. But then the relationship also is not, it didn't work. So why not? Um, I don't like to be controlled. I don't want to be told what to do. Because if I meet the woman, I told them already, like, this is me. You have to get, you have to put up with me the way who I am. Umar's marriage to his third wife didn't last either. He retreated back to Lamu and sustained himself by turning to the sea as a Dao coxway a skill he learned from his father, but one heavily supported by his love interests. Umar owns three boats, all bought by two separate women. As we sail past Lamu's picturesque dunes, he picks up where he left off, from a passionate night that turned into something more with an enigmatic Tekra Mwegai. Hey, Nikulala. Namka chana lunch hours or after lunch, nakula lunch. It was party animal. Party after party, you are going to say, Yeah. How much would you spend a night? Here? Yeah. With her? Hmm. Thousand, I mean, dollars, yeah? A thousand or, dollars? Yeah, or one thousand five hundred dollars. Those first few days partying together turned into weeks, then months, with short breaks of not seeing each other. Omar says they fell deeper and deeper in love with each other. It was then, he claims, that Tekra slowly began to open up. Their relationship was blooming as they left Lamu and traveled all over East Africa together. But back in Nairobi, concern was growing in the Karanja household about Tekra's whereabouts. She missed away from us for like three, four months. You tried to call Tekra, you can't get her. You can't, uh, you can't really, even if you send a message, she sent it very brief. Then one day, I remember, I think I was in, uh, I think I was in New York, yeah. And she sent a, a, a picture of this guy in the family group, and we were thinking probably it's comedy, someone from the, or someone, whatever. And she said to us that this is a guy that has been with me. And all of us were like, actually nobody replied to that. So everyone was shocked. We called each other now separately. And we're like, did you guys see what we just saw? And she told us that the name is, the name Omar. If you listen to Omar Lali's account of his relationship with Tekra Mwigai, it's one of pure magic, brewed under the skies of the beautiful Lamu beaches. And for the most part, it's Omar's side of the story that is out there. But that is mainly the Lamu side of the story. <laughs> 